Hi, this is Wanda from Go Laser Go, and in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Long Array 10 Watt Laser Engraving and Cutting Machine. Now let's start with a quick unboxing so that you can see what comes with the machine. Now we start with the manual, and this one is actually pretty good. It has quite a good step-by-step -step guide for putting the machine together, and the images throughout are really helpful. Now we come to the main components and the first thing we find is a pair of safety glasses which pretty much comes standard with most laser machines these days and we're building up quite a nice little collection of them. Now we have a bag full of bits and pieces including screws, allen keys and a wrench and you also get a brush, a focus spacer, a USB card reader, a TF card and a few pieces of plywood to practice with. Now what I really liked about this is that they labelled the bag so you can see which screws you need for each step of the installation process and this is pretty important because you're not having to sort through and find out what goes where as you're doing each step. Now we have the laser module itself and this is a 10 watt laser but you can also purchase this as a 5 watt or a 20 watt version. And of course we have a power supply and a cable, both the most important. Next we have the bars for what makes up the frame of the machine, so you get four of those. Then there's the USB cable which you'll use to connect the machine to your computer. Now there is a 3.5 inch touchscreen and this is a nice addition but bear in mind that you don't have to use the touchscreen to get this machine working. In this video we won't be using it at all but we'll go into more detail on how it's used in our second video. So check the link in the description field below for that. Now we have the x-axis and this of course is the part that holds the laser module. And finally we have the legs. Now you only get three but that is because the touch screen works as a leg at the front of the machine. Now this is a frame style laser machine so that means we have to assemble it, unfortunately, but I mean we have to with most of them anyway. And fortunately the manual was very good with this one so putting it together wasn't terribly difficult. Mind you, we have put a number of machines together in the past, so we've had a bit of practice now. But even so, I think this is one of the easiest ones we've done so far. Now we won't go into every step in this video because we have created a more detailed one that we'll be uploading, so check the link in the description field below for that. So you can see what the machine looks like when it's completed. Now as laser machines go, it's pretty standard for the style of machine. Feels quite sturdy and the components feel solid and nothing feels cheap in any way. Having said that it's solid, it's also lightweight so you can move it around fairly easily. Now perhaps the cables could be better hidden for a more streamlined look, but for this price point it's pretty standard for this type of cabling system. We didn't have any problems with attaching the cables. There was plenty of length in them, uh, so there was no problem there. We have had at least one laser where the cables were just not long enough and would pop out of the laser module every now and then. But this isn't a problem with this one. Okay, so we've got it all together and now it's just a matter of connecting it to our computer. So we plug in the power cable and then the US cable which you insert into the top of the machine and connect the other end to a USB port on your computer. Now we do feel that the USB port could have been in a better position. I feel it would have looked better coming out from the side rather than the top of the touch screen, but it is what it is. Now we use Lightburn as our preferred software, so in order for Lightburn to see your machine, you're going to have to connect it. So we opened up Lightburn and we click on Devices and from the pop-up that appears we select Create Manually. Now select the GRBL option and click Next. Then choose the Serial slash USB option and click Next. Now you just need to enter the name of your laser machine. So in this case I'm entering Longer Ray 5 10 Watt. Then in the X axis and the Y axis fields, we need to enter 400 for each of those fields and click Next to continue. And finally, we just need to unselect Auto Home and click Next. And click Finish to complete the setup. Just click on OK to exit and you're done. Your machine should now show up in the Laser section in Lightburn. Now there are a couple of extra steps that you need to complete in Lightburn. So click the settings icon at the top of the screen and select the mm min option and click OK. And then click on the device settings option at the top of the screen or you can go to edit and select it from there. Now on that screen just select 
enable DTR signal, enable laser fire button and laser on when framing and click OK when you are done. And finally just come over to the power field and enter 2%. Now in the pack, Longer have included a few pieces of plywood, so we're going to create a material test pattern in Lightburn to enable us to work out the best engraving and cutting settings for that type of wood. So to start with, we place the plywood piece on our surface. We use a tile for our surface that we purchased from our local hardware store. It just protects our bench top. And then we place the focus column at the back of the laser module. And this creates the correct distance between the laser and the material that we'll be cutting or engraving on. So now we just need to untighten the thumb screws and move the laser module up or down so that it sits nicely on that focus column and then we can retighten the screws. And once it's in the correct position, we remove the focus column. Now back in Lightburn, we need to create a material test pattern. So we click on Laser Tools from the top menu and select Material Test. Now here you are basically entering the settings to create a test pattern. Now you can freeze the screen to see the settings we went with here, or check out our setup video for a more detailed look at this. Now essentially what we're wanting to do here is test out various different settings to see which ones work best for this type of plywood. And you'll do this with all the materials that you use over time. You'll create a test pattern so that you can see what works best. Now you can see how that is going to look by clicking on the preview button. It creates a nice grid with different power and speed combinations and you can do this for both cutting and engraving. And this is what we ended up with for both the engraving and the cutting tests. So now that we have a test pattern to go with, we can create our first project. And we went with this lovely eagle design. Now I can't remember where we got this from, but if we figure it out, we'll put a link to it in the description field below. Now we resized the image to fit our project piece and then selected fill since we want to engrave this. We decided to go with a speed setting of 4000 and a power setting of 30 based on our test pattern. Now you can see that we've placed our piece of plywood in the position and we use the framing option in Lightburn so that we can just move it around until it's actually in the right position for us to engrave. And once we're happy with the positioning, we're good to go. So just click start and the machine will begin engraving. Now this did a beautiful job as you can see here and for our first project we were very pleased with the result. Now in our next video we'll be checking out this machine's cutting ability and we'll also be testing out a number of different materials. We'll also be taking a closer look at the built-in touchscreen. Now just before I finish up I'd like to thank Longa for sending us their Ray 510 Watt Laser Engraver to try out. And there will be a buying link in the description field below so don't forget to check that out. So thank you for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more videos. And don't forget to watch part 2 for the longer Ray 5 10 Watt Laser Engraver.